So first, maybe let's talk about the Ed Sheeran case itself. Um, you know, I was very surprised to see this is still going on after seven years, but to give folks the background, Ed Sheeran has been accused of uh, infringing on the rights in the Marvin Gaye song, Let's Get It On, or the very famous song. And he's been sued by two sets of people who own rights in the composition. He's, Ed Sheeran has won at, in, before jury and before court, but this is now up on appeal. Um, and what specifically he's accused of doing is using a, a chord progression and a harmonic rhythm that are part of Let's Get It On. Um, you know, the, the rights holders say, you used our stuff without consent. Um, but a jury found and a judge held that, look, these chord progressions, these harmonic rhythms are part of the basic building blocks of music. And moreover, right, all creativity builds on the past. All songs are made up of a limited number of notes and chords available to the composers. That's what the, the judge said. And he continued saying to protect their combination would give Let's Get It On an impermissible monopoly. And that's, that's a really important point. And that's why copyright has always allowed certain uses of existing content, existing material, by drawing lines between protectable expression and unprotectable ideas, facts, and other elements. That's one of the ways that copyright allows use of existing materials. So rights holders can demand consent for some uses, but they are not allowed to enclose and cut off the basic building blocks of culture and knowledge. Now, in terms of how you draw that line specifically, as in all things with copyright, it can be complicated and nuanced, and it differs across jurisdiction. But the point is that we have years of rulings and law and cases to go on. So to your, your question, and when it comes to generative AI, we're actually not starting from scratch, right? Generative AI raises a similar issue. When we're thinking about large language models, they're doing, a you know, to build them, it's a big statistical analysis of lots and lots of texts to derive rules about syntax and how different concepts are related to each other and facts about the world. Same with generative AI for music. It's you know analyzing lots and lots of music in order to tease out those you know, basic building blocks as was discussed in the Ed Sheeran case. And you know there will be some hard line drawing here that will come in with generative AI, but we have those uh, precedents and that legal sort of outline to, to build on. And at the very least, what we know is this issue can't be re reduced to the simplicity of consent or not. Because the question is consent for what, right? Is it consent for, of course you need consent for certain uses of protectable expression, but deriving insights, deriving uh, uncopyrightable elements from protectable expression generally can be permissible. So I think that's the grounding here. We, you know, There's not one bright line, but we do have a lot of case law and knowledge and history to go on.